Hello everyone, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be talking about multi-stage document re-ranking pipeline that you can incorporate in your RAG systems for improving the performance. So let's start off by understanding in just two minutes to what a typical RAG pipeline looks like. So you have a bunch of documents. Let's say these are the three documents that you have and you want to build a question answering system on top of these documents. And this is the question that you are trying to ask. So the first thing that you do is you index each of these documents at a certain chunk level into your vector database. Now what that looks like in practice is like you have these pages, you convert them into chunks. For each chunk, then you use certain embedding method to embed these chunks. And post that if you want, you can add a certain metadata if required and then eventually index these documents. And on question end, you simply have an embedded system that converts a given query to its semantic representation. And that is what you query for in the inference time. Once this is done, you get the output of saying, what are the document IDs which are most relevant to the question that you have asked for? And let's say it says document number two. So this was one, this was two, and this was three. And it said two. Let me just put it in blue. Yeah. And as the final step, you have your LLM in place that takes in this document along with the original question, not the embedding of that as an input and gives out the answer A. Now, this is how a typical rack pipeline looks like. But what if you have multiple documents coming into play? Let's say here, instead of three, you had maybe five documents, four and fifth, and the output was two, four, and one. Now, this is ranked based on the semantic similarity between the question and the document content or rather the chunk content where two has the highest score let's say 0.7 this has 0.25 this has 0.03 and so on and so forth but the question is like is this enough or is this optimal or is there a scope of me rearranging these documents so that the one that goes to llm eventually results in a dash which is better than a so let's look into certain re-ranking methods that you can apply at this stage that will help you reshuffle the output that comes from vector database and eventually give better input to your LLM. Cool. So a multi-stage re-ranking system usually looks like this. You have M0, M1, and M2. Method 0, method 1, method 2 where M0 is usually the first level filtering that you do, which was done by vector database, which is again a semantic similarity kind of function. If you don't want that, you can have, let's say TF, IDF or BM25 based functions put in place that will help you reduce the search space by retrieving only the relevant ones that are above certain threshold to the query that you have asked for. Okay, so once the initial scores are generated, we apply M1 on top of that, where there are multiple ways of implementing M1. What I'll talk about is a method called MonoBert and Mono P5. I'll put their paper link in the comments. Make sure to check it out. So what they say is, we'll use the BERT architecture that takes in your query and each of the documents that I have retrieved is a part of MO. So let's call it DI. And let's say in total we had 100 documents as a part of MO, now you have 10 documents. So all the pairs would look like Q, D1, Q, D2, Q, D, D3, and so on and so forth. So each of these pair go to the BERT model and at output, I get to see the relevance score that ranges between zero and one, signifying how relevant my document D is to my query Q. And let's say it says 0.7 and so on and so forth. It calculates for all the 10 documents that you have. Okay, so now with this, you get second level of scores for these documents. So now it could be, let's say D3, D2, D1. This is the re-ranked version of the initial documents where you had, let's say D5, D1, D2, and so on and so forth. So that is first level of re-ranking for which I talked about as a monobert model. Now a variation of this is mono T5 that the paper puts in models and I think in a sequence sequence fashion. So what they say is instead of me using the BERT model, I'll use T5 that is a prefix encoder decoder architecture. And on input, what I'll give is question followed by question string, then document followed by document string, 
and then relevance and this is what i need to autofill as a part of my decoder and the output would be either true or false as a string that i'll generate so true means the document is relevant to the question false means it's not as simple as that and in practice they found mono t5 this architecture to work much better compared to the mono bert architecture cool so with that we move to the m2 re-ranking step so you can very well again this is how typically we are doing stuff at m0 and then we are directly taking a call to pass what to the llm but you can incorporate just m2 followed by m1 that's also a possibility that should help you improve the output eventually but if we go one step further and we recalculate the ranking let's see how that can be done so for this again we have two methods the first one is duo bird and i'll give you three seconds to guess the name for the second one one two three yeah you guys it right it's duo t5 cool so again the idea is same we are replacing BERT with T5 model to whatever we will be doing as a part of M2. So now the idea that M2 brings on to the table is that I'll take into consideration pairwise documents. So for example, if I say this is the BERT model. So now instead of just giving one document, I'll give query document one, or let's call it document I and document J where I is not equal to J. And on the output end, I'll generate the probability of i comma j, which means what is the probability that d i document is more relevant than d j. Inversely, p j comma i would mean what's the probability that d j is more relevant than d i for this question. So here we calculate all the pairs that can exist for i and j. We started off with 100 documents. We came down to 10. Here again, we'll have 10 documents. You can choose to prune some of the tail based on the threshold but and let's say we get to just top three documents so the total number of pairs that you are going to generate is three into three minus one which is six so let's say these three documents were these three two one so all these six pairs would look like three comma two three comma one one comma three two comma three and so on and so forth and the t5 version of it is nothing but just replacing all of this with t5 model where again you have this to which you give input as question document one document two and then the keyword relevant and you want to get true or false over here as an output from the decoder but now an obvious question comes in like these models have a limitation to dealing with a certain context length how are we on earth even concatenating such big things assuming that all of them will be handled as part of the input so for that authors of duo bird and duo t5 truncated these documents to a length that all of that fits to a context window of 512 or 1024 to whatever that's the case so they truncated query at 64 this at 233 this again at 233 here you have one keyword and it would generate one keyword then followed by cls separator tokens and so on and eventually all of that was fitting under the 512 token length and why only these numbers because for the marco ms data set and also the other one on which they tested they found that on these settings none of the queries was getting truncated this was more than enough and for the documents only one person of data was getting truncated so that also worked for them but for you that not might always be the case so but still if you pull in the first two 33 documents you are more or less capturing the crux i believe if that's not the case you can apply a certain extractive techniques let's say text rank to only get out sentences that are relevant and that add up to the length of 233 over here and which is a representation of the bigger document that you had so all of those changes are flexible and and you are free to decide how that document is represented cool so that's the idea of multi-stage document re-ranking where we have three steps m0 which is the initial level of filtering that we did as a part of vector database tfidf or bm25 we applied first level of re-ranking which is m1 based on monobert or mono t5 we re-ranked it again based on m2 which is based on duobert or duo t5 which considers document pairs instead of just single document along with the question that was done in monobert so here if you see monobert can be seen as point wise re-ranking 
because for one document you're trying to see how good it fits to that question whereas Duobird clearly does it at a pairwise re-ranking. So that's the crux of multi-stage re-ranking. There's also something very simple that you can do. For example, if you had a bigger document, you chunked it out, you passed it to your vector database, all of that is chunked and indexed. You pass in a question that says, what was the value of X in the year 2023? And let's say during the indexing phase, you added the year that is against those documents or you do an entity recognition and then index it against each of the chunks. And now let's say this document returns one, two, and three, but 2023 was present as a part of metadata for only document number two. So that is what you re-rank again. And for one and three, you can just use the typical scores that you initially had. You bump the score of two by some notch because it has that keyword 2023 in its metadata. And now this is your re-ranked list on which if you want to use just the top one, two would be the one that you'll give to LLM along with the question to get the relevant answer. So this is again metadata level re-ranking that you can perform in case you are not looking for something that's sophisticated as, as this one or maybe this simply solves your use case to what you're looking for. So one thing to note in this sequence of transformation that we're doing is that since both M1 and M2 take into consideration all the documents that you had and all the pairs that you could make, ideally the set that you should pass from M0 to M1 to M2 keep on reducing because otherwise then the entire re-ranking step will take a lot of time and compute and incur cost. So the best thing is like M0 should be able to get you the least set on which you want to do the re-ranking and then you perform all of that on the smaller set. Cool. So that's it for this video. And as I said, I'll add link to the paper for MonoBert and Mono T5, DuoBert and Duo T5 in the description. Make sure to check it out. I hope you learned something new and it was helpful. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Do share it across the friends to whosoever is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye. Take care. And have a good sleep.